Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to check out the Hornet King channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys the removal process that I use to remove a yellow jacket ground nest from a client's house. Plus, I have an update on the yellow jacket ground nest that I removed in a previous video and showing how it's been developing here at my house after being relocated. Plus, I have an update on all my animals, including my chickens, my turkey, and my squirrely squirrels. Here's the video. Check it out. Alright, so this is a yellow jacket ground nest colony that had built its nest underneath of this bush. Um, and as you can see here, there were some foragers flying in and out from this one entrance way on one side of the bush. However, they were entering from um, about three different sides. So this is just my setup process, getting my cameras, my mics, and my equipment set up. Uh, putting a little bit of Dawn dish soap in the bottom of the vacuum and then adding some water, usually about a half gallon of water. And any wasps that I do vacuum up, do, uh, if they aren't killed by the G-force, they're killed by the soapy water pretty quickly. Worst part about this is having to put on undergarments to go underneath my suit because it's so hot. So I put on sweatpants and I put on thermal sweaters. And this is just gives me extra protection in case the suit gets pulled tight against my skin. Then they can't sting me or through the, uh, through the thinner fabric of the suit. Now gloves, these, these suits have these little hoops on them, and this just keeps your sleeve pulled up. So that way when you put your gloves on, your sleeves don't roll down. And this, uh, last year I'd have to put duct tape around my wrists, but the goat skin leather on these come up a little higher, and then this is super thick canvas. So I don't think I'm going to be getting any stings on my sleeves. So Jessica, my beautiful wife, is helping me with camera work today. I'm trying to see where they're going. They might even be going back in there. Alright, so the first part that I usually do with any ground nest is to just vacuum up as many of the foragers as I can. And this side of the bush having the most activity is where I started. So I'm trying to get some slow motion shots of the yellow jackets getting sucked up into the nozzle of the vacuum. Um, a lot of people asked for that some slow motion shots, so I was able to get that. You see this one forager coming in and bloop, into the nozzle. So I was pretty excited about that shot. So oftentimes when people watch my ground nest removal videos, they suggest that I just pour gasoline down in the entranceway and that will kill the nest 100%. Um, but that's actually not always true. Um, it's only true if the nest is directly beneath the entranceway um, or very close to it. However, this nest, the entranceway was about a foot and a half laterally from where the nest was underground. So just dumping a little bit of gasoline into that hole would not have killed this nest. So the best way to do it is the process that I use where I actually physically remove the colony. I know where the entranceway is, but I just don't know how far back in we're going. Looks like we're going like directly underneath the plant. All right, so usually with the hardest part about these kind of removals when it, there's foliage involved is trying to locate exactly where the entranceway leads to. Um, finding the entranceway usually isn't very hard. You're looking for a hole in the ground where the yellow jackets are flying in and out of. However, underneath the ground where that tunnel goes is the harder part. So um, as you can see where my pry bar is dug in to hold the bush back, that's actually where the nest was. Um, I actually stabbed it with, <laughs> with the pry bar. Um, so when I pulled that bar out, I could see that there was some activity coming out of the hole that I made. So you can see that I put my, my vacuum nozzle closer to the, um, to the pry bar and just trying to get 
um, as many of the foragers coming out as possible. They weren't super aggressive just because this being an early season colony, um, a little bit of pheromone response to, to attack is only going to be affecting about 15 to 20 individuals as opposed to hundreds as, uh, as the season progresses once more adults start hatching. So you see a little bit of envelope landing on top of the dirt there. I knew I was pretty much right in the right spot. And using the vacuum as a uh, means to excavate the soil out, um, you start to see more of the, uh, the comb appearing at the surface. This is super soft soil, so it really would not have taken much for them to start building a massive colony by the end of the season. Um, this being a flower bed, this has been mulched and mulched over many, many years, so the soil is super soft. So I didn't want to. I, don't, I never really want to damage the nest when I'm pulling them out. I, I like to, you know, save them for my for my animals and things. So I try not to squish as many of the larvae. There's the queen there at the bottom of the hole. You see, she's the larger of the of the individuals crawling around. So I just wanted to grab her. And the second I picked her up, she started stinging my glove. So you can see there, her stinger's actually lodged into my glove, into the into the leather. And eventually she breaks loose, and she can still coast fly, but she can't actually fly under her own weight. Um, as queens start laying more larvae, they, their abdomens become so engorged and heavy that they can no longer carry their own weight to fly. So I wasn't planning on saving any of the individuals here. I wasn't planning on relocating um, just because of I didn't really have a place to put them. And I'm still experimenting with ground nest relocations. So I decided just to uh, suck up as many as I could and um, even including the... Uh, the newly hatched adults and just to take them home to my animals to feed them. But that pack of larva, and that would have been a large colony. Good to get, get it out of there now. It's a couple newly hatched adults, they can't fly yet. And all these white things are silk caps that the larva will weave. So they can go to their through their metamorphosis state into an adult wasp. So they go from larva to pupating adult to adult wasp. All right. So right after I'm done, I like to just fill in the hole and just try to put everything back the way I found it when I came to the to the client's house. So just kind of fluffing up the bush and making it look like I, I never manhandled it. <laughs> so the ones walking around the outside here are actually, um, they're newly hatched adults. So they aren't going to be aggressive, they can't fly, and they typically can't sting either. There's a lot of larvae in here. I'm not going to be tweezing any of these out, but I'm going to give them right to the chickens. So let's get to it. Pigeon be tearing these nests up. <clears throat> Let me give you a ginger pigeon. Oh. 
Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. All right, this is the removal that I just did in my previous video, and I tried relocating this nest to my house. So this is just a couple shots from the previous video. If you'd like to check that out, you can click on the link at the top of the screen here. And um, so I removed this nest out of the ground, put it in a bin, took it home back to my house, dug a little hole in the ground, as you can see, and uh, glued the stick to the nest and then just put that down in the hole and use the stick to suspend the nest in the hole and then just covered it back up. So here's the update to that removal. All right, so I'm gonna to try to take this brick and this piece of wood off from the top of this nest. Now this nest has been going now for like a week and a half, almost two, like probably over two weeks. There's gonna be a lot of adults in here. I think I've been counting about five foragers. That's not counting the guards that are in there that don't really leave, the queen, and any new hatched adults that are ready to fly that just haven't made an emergency yet. I'm gonna be trying to cut all the car noises out of this. One faux pas about where I relocated this nest to was that it's right here where the frickin' traffic is non-stop. So I'm going to take this brick and piece of wood off. There's one that's curious now. So I'm going to take this brick and piece of wood off to show you guys how much they've been building. This has been, I relocated this here about two, and, two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago. So I'm really curious to see how much they have grown the nest. Hopefully they didn't attach it to the, um, to the underside of the wood. So, so far I've had a couple foragers come out that are just curious. They haven't really been uh, aggressive. Um, so I like to keep it that way. So once a few of the foragers leave, then I'll take the, take the brick off very slowly um, and then take the piece of wood off. I'm gonna do it without my suit just so we can see um, how confident I am. <laughs> I promise this isn't stupid. Worst case scenario, they start to come out and they start exploring. They're going to go to the cameras before they go to me. So I got one camera set up over there and then one here. And then the microphone. And of course, one comes in. They've been just carrying chunks of soil out. So I know that that's got to be pretty well cleaned around that nest. It's one. And they go down like a ways down the yard before they drop them. They don't drop them right outside the nest. They take them out, fly them down about 40 yards, and then I see a little, <laughs> a little speck of something fall. What I should do is set up like a plastic, like a plastic tarp, and then I can set up my really sensitive microphone so you can hear it hit the tarp, and then I can count all the little pieces and just for the sake of science, as it were. I don't even know how solid this is.
No, it's actually, you can't really see much under there. So we're gonna leave that alone. So we're all just kind of sitting here. 8.30 in the morning. Watching the yellow jackets. <laughs> Hello, turkey. Hello, gobble. Hello, gobble. Hello, turkey. Hello, little turkey. You're not so little anymore, turkey. You're absolutely humongous. Hey, pigeon. There's chocolate chip. There's Daisy and Giblet. Oh, and there's Tiggers. Oh, flat squirrel. Hey, squeeze squirrel. <laughs> oh, bully squirrel. <laughs> Come on, squirrel squirrel. Come on, squirrel squirrel. Oh, squirrelly squirrel. Come for this nut, squirrelly squirrel. You want this peanut, squirrelly squirrel? Come here, squirrelly squirrel. Like this, squirrelly squirrel. <laughs> oh, squirrelly squirrel. Why are you on the roof? Why are you on the roof of the barn, squirrelly squirrel? Oh, you're signaling to all your... You're signaling the song of your people, squirrelly squirrel? You got three quarters of a tail, squirrel. It doesn't shake very well, does it? Oh, Miss Emily. She started building a nest all the way up there. <laughs> She's got all a bunch of leaves tucked into a crotch of a branch. That's her first nest. Hey, Miss Emily. I brought over some, some water. She got a good drink. Now she's eating some peanuts and some walnuts. Hi, Ginger. Here, here's a walnut. Here. There's a walnut. You can have that. Don't be such a scaredy squirrel. Miss Emily. Oh, scary squirrel. Oh, ground squirrel. Are you being a ground squirrel, squirrel squirrel? Are you being a filthy squirrel, squirrel squirrel? Oh, what a nice dirt bath, squirrel squirrel. Does that dirt feel good to you, Squirrelly Squirrel? Does that dirt feel good to you, Squirrelly Squirrel? Oh, dirty squirrel. Are you getting all the mites and chiggers off you, Squirrelly Squirrel? Is that sure you're something you want to do, Giblet? Oh, cooled off squirrel. Hey, squirrel squirrel. <laughs> Does your pregnant brain have you all screwed up, squirrel squirrel? Are you hearing voices, squirrel squirrel? Oh, prairie dog squirrel. Oh, prairie squirrel. Here, here's a walnut for your efforts. Ooh. Oh, clean it off in the grass, squirrel squirrel. Get cleaned off in the grass, squirrel squirrel. Oh, slinky squirrel. Roly poly oly squirrel. Here, please. Oh, Humphrey Squirrel.
All right, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to check out this video. If you guys enjoyed this content, drop in the comments. Let me know what you think. If you have any suggestions for future videos, something like to see me cover an upcoming video, also drop in the comments. Let me know. If you guys haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so and hit that bell notification down below. That way you guys get an update anytime I do post a video. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to check out my videos and supporting my channel, and I'll catch you on the next video.